Welcome to 2012 and another year of journalism practice. All six issues are complete and published in print or electronic formats or are in press. The February issue of Journalism Practice, Volume 6, Number 1, is a special issue looking at the prolific growth and range of the concerns of lifestyle journalism, or service journalism, which has occasionally been the subject of criticism by journalists and scholars, reflecting its emphasis on soft news and its alleged too proximate connection with the market and public relations. The editorial concerns of lifestyle journalism are very wide and this breadth of interest raises definitional problems which guest editor Dr. Fokker Hanisch addresses directly. Indeed, a key ambition for this collection is to help redress the relative scholarly neglect of lifestyle journalism or news you can use, but also to suggest that we need to be more open to an understanding of journalism which extends beyond a consideration of just hard news and watchdog journalism. Consequently, the studies published in this issue try to conceptualise and define the field but also explore lifestyle journalism by focusing on travel, food, fashion blogs, music, financial advice and personal technology in a range of national contexts including Australia, China, Denmark, Norway, Singapore, the United Kingdom and the United States. I think the research presented here constitutes an important body of work which will become essential reading for students of lifestyle journalism. Following the editorial introduction, Alfred Forsick conceptualizes the field in her essay Lifestyle Journalism as Popular Journalism, while Nita Norgard Christensen and Uni Fromm address definitional concerns in lifestyle journalism blurring boundaries. Lynn McGaw discusses travel journalism. Roel Puick considers health programming from the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation, while Andrew Duffy and Yang Yu Hong Ashley offer the intriguingly titled Bread and Circuses, Food Meets Politics in the Singapore Media. Agnes Rokomora analyzes hypertextuality and remediation in fashion blogs. Nikki Usher surveys service journalism and personal finance at the New York Times. And finally, Schwangli unravels the professional approach to lifestyle magazine journalism in China. As ever, I'm indebted to manuscript reviewers Professor Sammy Johnson, the Carlos Augustus de Lozano Chair of Journalism at Trinity University, San Antonio, USA, and Professor Tim Luckhurst, who heads the Center for Journalism and the News Industry at the University of Kent here in the UK. Both many thanks for their generosity in giving their time and attention to this collection of essays and offering authors such invaluable advice. In addition to all this, there are, of course, the book reviews and now inevitably Brian McNair's very popular film review. Is there a better way to begin 2012? Personally, I doubt it. Enjoy this page turner and I'll be back and see you in April.